What is up, people? My name is Tim Buell. Today, we're talking about the Roland SPD-SX, and specifically, I'm going to give you two great setups that sound awesome that you can do on the Roland SPD-SX, all going to be using samples that come inside your Roland SPD-SX when you open it up and take it out of the box. <laughs> These two setups are going to be one for kind of like a hybrid when you're playing drum set, but you also want some cool electronic samples to do a hybrid setup. That's gonna be the first setup. And then the second kit we're gonna build will be for like stripped down acoustic sets. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna dig through all the sounds on here. We're gonna find ones that work for really practical setups for using actually using this on a gig. You can actually download the kits that I'm about to build in the description below, again, they use all of the factory sounds that come with the Rolands. You can download these kits in the description below. Disclaimer, if you load up my kits like I have them here, you're going to overwrite everything that's on your SPD-SX. So before you do that, you're gonna wanna back up your Roland SPD-SX, which is pretty simple. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have a USB stick in the back. Go to Menu, Utility, you're gonna go to save, uh, and then you're gonna go to all and hit enter. You're going to save as, you're gonna name it, and then you'll hit enter, and it will back it up. Now, pro tip, I was trying to back up mine before I factory reset so I could make this video, and it says you can do, you can format the USB drive as FAT or FAT32. I had to format my drive as FAT for it to work. I was getting an error before. And once you have your stuff backed up, you can also throw on my presets that I'm about to build right now, and you can load them up. All right, so to install these presets on a USB drive so that you can put them on your Roland, what you're gonna do is you're going to download the .zip file from the link in the description. On a Mac, you can just double click it, but on a PC, you can right click it, go to extract all, it will extract, and then it'll leave a folder, and inside that folder, you will find a folder labeled Roland. Copy the Roland folder that's inside the .zip file that you downloaded. Then you're going to drag that over to your USB and put it right in the main thing of the USB. Now, if you already have a Roland folder on your USB drive, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to go down a couple levels and go into the backup folder that you just downloaded and copy the Tim kits over and put it inside the backup folder of your USB already on there. But once you've loaded that on the right place, you're gonna go to your USB after you've backed up yours, because again, if you do what I'm about to do, you're going to totally overwrite everything. But you're gonna to wanna to go to utility. We're gonna to wanna to go to load this time instead of save, because we've already backed it up. You're gonna to go to all, and then you should see in this list right here, you should see the preset named Tim put the preset name here, arrow down to that, hit enter, and it will load. It'll take a while, but there'll be a little progress bar and it'll tell you when it's done. And then you'll have everything just like I do. But for those of you that wanna build it yourself, let's go ahead and dig through this SPDSX and find the sounds that sound good. So let's go and let's build this first kit. So the first kit is going to be for a hybrid drum setup where you're playing the Roland SPDSX in combination with an actual drum set, which I did a video on a, a while ago on my YouTube channel. I have a whole video about that. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is name your kit. So you can go to quick, you can go down to kit name, and let's name this, um, so we have Tim One set up, ready to go. Now I have a whole layout that I'm gonna do, but the first thing that I wanna do is during a gig, I'll be operating everything off of a kit chain. So I'll have all my kits listed out in the order they need to appear. And I don't wanna use a button at that point to navigate during a show. What I wanna be able to do is hit a pad and advance to the next kit in the kit chain. So how we can do that is I'm gonna set up this first pad, kit pad number one. I'm gonna set that to be a pad that isn't a sound, but it's advanced to the next kit. How you do that is menu, system, pad, foot switch control, we're gonna go to pad one, and we're going to go to kit increase. Once I've done that, I can hit kit. As you'll see, once I hit this pad, we advance to the next pad, we advance to the next pad. So now, that's universal. Now every kit on the Roland SPDSX has that 
as a advance to the next kit. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna find some retro 80s toms because when I'm playing, you know, a full drum set on a gig, every now and then we'll play a song that's very like retro 80s drum sounds are definitely in vogue right now. And every now and then we'll do like a cover of a song or do some song that's produced very 80s. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig through and we're gonna find some 80s toms that we can put in pad number two and three. So let's get into that. Let's go to menu. We're gonna go to kit pad. I'm gonna hit pad number two. And then let's dig through and see if we can't get to these toms. So pro tip, if you hold pad check and you hit the plus or minus key, you'll jump ahead in 10 increments. So whether you're switching through kits or you're switching through sounds like we are now, you'll jump through much quicker if you hold that. So we got the cymbals here, we got hi-hats, we got hi-hats, kick drums. I'm skipping by tens right now. We've got some percussion cowbell, ride cymbal, noise, snare drums, toms. Okay, so let's check out these toms. That's an 808 tom, it's not really what I'm looking for. Now we're talking, that's it. So that's pad 135, that's the high version. I'm gonna go to pad number three, and I'm gonna go to 136 really quick. So now we've got our retro toms in there. That'll be nice for the 80s cover we do or whatever. Every now and then on a gig, the cross stick from actually playing um, on my snare drum just doesn't quite cut in the mix because you know, the PA, the front of house has everything dialed in for actual snare drum notes. And if I wanna get a cross stick that's really consistent, that's perfect, that they're gonna be able to mix perfectly at front of house, I can use a sample on this and it's gonna be much more consistent. So let's find a good cross stick sound that sounds very natural, sounds very normal, um, but you know, will replace me actually having to play a cross stick live on a gig. Pad number four. Okay, around 122 is where the cross sticks start. I like number five. I think that that sounds the most natural. It's not, it doesn't have any reverb on it. Um, it's not too high. It's kind of just like, it's a cross stick. We've got four out of nine pads that we've taken up. Let's go ahead and move on to pad number five where I wanna put a snap. I think that when I'm on a gig, you know, there's a couple of stock samples that I think are really useful in pretty much any genre you play, um, especially if you're doing cover gigs. And one of those is snaps and claps. So let's find a good snap that we can put on pad number five. So I went through like all the sounds and there actually isn't a snap sound that I can find in the standard thing. So all the other videos that you've seen me do on the SPDSX, I actually use my own snap samples. So now I know why you guys wanted those snap samples because they actually don't come in here. But sample number six does kind of sound like a snap. It's like a small clap, but it sounds a little bit like a snap. So we're gonna go with that. And then for pad number six, we're gonna do a traditional clap sound. And I'm gonna use clap number, it's actually sample number one. Uh, I like it because it's a clap, but it has a little bit of reverb on it, which distinguishes it a little bit from the fake, you know, kind of small, smaller clap that we're using as our snap. We have three more pads to go. So for pad number seven, I'm gonna find just a traditional 808 kick drum. This is something that's really useful. It comes in handy on pretty much any gig you do because you can kind of just like use it in maybe the verses or in the intro of a song before real drums kick in. It gives you a way where you can kind of drive stuff by doing four on the floor, but you're not moving as much air with your actual kick drum. So let's find a good 808 on pad number seven. So I'm actually gonna use a 909 kick um, because it's got a little more attack. So I use sample number 44, which has enough attack where it's not gonna just like disappear um, and just be only like rumbly low end. Um, so that's pad number seven. We have eight and nine left on this kind of hybrid thing. Number eight, I'm just gonna go through and find something kind of fun that might be useful on a gig uh, that you might not need but might be useful to add just sonic variety. 
All right, so I chose sample number 33. It's a little electronic hi-hat sound, and this is because now I can actually play like a full intro to a song, play under the vocalist while they introduce the song before like full band kicks in, and we can have a lot of dynamic contrast because it'll be all sample pad, and then once the full band kicks in, I'll kick in real drums, and it'll be a huge dynamic change. So it'll go from and it'll kick into full drums and it'll be awesome. So that's pad number eight, and then pad number nine. Let's go to pad number nine and find a, I want a sub drop. All right, so sample number 100. That's our sub drop, that's gonna be awesome. That's for like the final course of a song right before it, I can hit that with a snare drum and it'll just drop and feel huge as we get into the last course. So that's our hybrid setup. The other thing that I do on all my kits is I go to menu, I go to kit pad, I go to mode, and when, with the dynamics, I turn all the dynamics off. And this is because I found over the years, this is just another little pro tip, over the years I found that front of house engineers really don't like it when all the dynamics change on every pad. So that's setup number one to be used with like a hybrid setup. So let's go ahead and set up kit number two, which is going to be like an acoustic kind of um, setup where you can do like stripped down sets that would normally be like you playing cajon. Instead of playing cajon, you can bring this. We're gonna outfit it with some of the inside sounds that will kind of work well with like a low volume gig like that. I'm gonna go to the next kit by hitting the, you know, pad number one. I'm gonna name this kit Tim2, enter, and let's build this out. So remember, pad number one is our advance to the next thing, so don't worry about that. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is in pad number two and three, I'm gonna find some timekeepers. So when I play Roland SPDSX for a stripped down set, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually bring a real life shaker because that feels a little more real and authentic way to keep time than like finding some kind of internal thing because you know, it just, a lot of them sound very like robotic because it's just one sample being played over and over again. So if you can bring a real shaker and play that with your acoustic gig, that's gonna sound maybe preferable. Okay, the first one I picked is number 23. It's a nice... One of the things that I wanna do is I don't actually wanna make this sound like a real drum kit because it's not. So I'm gonna find samples that I think are cool, that I find inspiring, that just sound cool in and of themselves. And then I will reimagine the song I'm used to playing full kit on. I'll reimagine it with these sounds in mind um, instead of try to have this mimic a real drum set. It's just not gonna do that well. It's not what it's designed for. So I'm gonna find sounds that I just think are cool, that will work well, and then you know make whatever part that I develop for the song fit these samples. All right, so I picked sample number 39. It sounds very different than the, that's kind of grittier. It's got a little more air around it. And this is a little bit shorter, a little bit um, sharper, um, which will contrast nicely. It gives me two different vibes that I can do, um, you know, depending on what part of the song or a different song or whatever. So those are the first two pads. Let's go to pad number four. With this, what I wanna do is I wanna give me myself something that simulates a crash. I wanna give something that when I hit it, it kind of signifies that we're on a downbeat. All right, so what I decided I was gonna do is I'm gonna do sample number 16, but I'm gonna bring the volume down to like 80%. And then I'm gonna go to the sub tab and I'm gonna find a different sample to layer as like a um, kind of like a, to, to dirt it up a little bit so it doesn't sound quite like a just little boring simulating a real crash symbol thing. All right, so what I did is in the main sample at 54 volume, I have sample number 16, which is just that standard kind of boring crash symbol. And then under the sub, I actually have sample 88, which is like this cool crasher like thing. So it just makes this sound a little less like I'm trying to imitate a real crash symbol. It adds a little dirt. Um, I don't know if that's really what I'd do. If I had more time, maybe I'd find something more um, adventurous. But that's what I'm gonna leave it now. And we're gonna move on to pad number five. And I'm gonna make this my first snare option. Now, it's not necessarily gonna be a snare. It's gonna be something that does the backbeat thing. And I'm gonna look for something that's a little bit smaller. It's not the biggest backbeat I'm gonna have, but it's gonna be something that just is a solid backbeat that'll work across a lot of songs. All right, I'm gonna go with sample number six as my kind of smaller backbeat. And um, okay, let's move on to 
number pad number six and find a bigger backbeat. All right, so for pad number six, I'm gonna go with sample 109, which is kind of this snare drum. And I'm gonna layer it with something else because it sounds a little bit just too much like a normal snare drum and I wanna give it a little bit of something. So I like it with this tambourine added, it adds a lot of high end, but I'm gonna bring the tambourine down to like 80. Mm, maybe even 70. Okay, so now we have that kind of like gritty stuff, but we also have a really bright tambourine. Let's go to pad number seven. And what we're doing on pad number seven is we're gonna find a kick drum sound. Again, this is gonna be a smaller kick drum sound, not the biggest kick drum sound. So for pad number seven, I went with sample 48. It's like a gritty, kind of short decay, just kick drum sound. Now we're gonna go pad number eight, we're gonna have a bigger kick drum sound. All right, so for the second bigger kick, uh, I'm gonna go with sample number 50. And then for this last pad on this acoustic setup, I'm gonna go for an effect that will give me just one more option of how I can kind of give a variety of sounds. All right, I found sample number 92, um, which is a cool sound, I, I, I dig it. So now what we have is, okay, let me go to mode and let me make sure that on all my pads, I've turned off the dynamics. So now what we have is pretty good. Now on my other YouTube lesson I have about playing the SPDSX for uh, acoustic gigs, I go through actually how you can do onboard effects um, and kind of like alter between course and add reverb when you're on the course and take it away when you're on the verse and all that stuff. Um, I also have a setup on there where it's actually, you know, my sounds that I've loaded on and it sounds a little bit better, but this will definitely work in a pinch without having to, you know, go find samples and mess around with all of that. So those are two setups. Remember, you can download these exact setups because they use all the factory settings on the Roland SPDSX. You can download those in the description. Make sure you back up your kits and everything before you do it, and then follow what I did in the beginning to kind of load it all on and all that stuff. But um, that's, that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for checking this one out. I'll see you all in the next video.